think I've done this before this video. So uh, can't do it before or after because uh, not unless I'm Superman and I quickly take all these uh, uh all these acoustical tiles down, like you know. <laughs> Um, but you know, I'm not the wizard of time and speed, so that's not going to happen. I doubt I have got other videos that I've got recorded a few years ago, different cameras or so, whatever, but I can still hear like, oh gosh, my room used to have a bit of a pingy echo. Yeah. Didn't kind of like it. I, it's not only room. I used to have this room as a bedroom one time. <laughs> and then I had home cinema in my bedroom because the walls were all equal shape because there is a chimney breast so that makes problematics um and that's easy to work out all the base and blah 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 black black sheep crying out loud i'm not an idiot um but i've done this one test before with a, a balloon <laughs> I could do it all clapping my hand. I've got Superman isolated score playing on John Williams here. 5.0. So I'll just mute that. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just set the camera down. Okay, balloon. Before I prick it, pop it. <laughs> I'll put my earplugs in. So I don't know what SPL level it's going to be at because it can't control it. I'd still be able to hear the sound. Okay. I'll have a look at it on the microphone. I'll pull it back through the RTA on the, uh, you know, just look at a general relativity of the, uh, so one, two, three. Whoops, didn't try it again. <laughs> Probably not sharp enough. One, two, three. And that's that. <laughs> and no, the microphone's not being used. It's not even turned on with the audio mixer. Just so I can just put something up there, hold it up. There we go. Simple. <clears throat> See a camera where it's placed is it's going to pick up sound in a room, isn't it? From where it's placed, you know. This is just a smartphone. It's on landscape, so it records stereo. Here. Get the idea. When you put a camera phone vertical, it's only recording mono. I guess a lot of people didn't know that. They're pretty stupid smart smartphones. Uh, they haven't got a whole lot on the damn thing you can do with. Might as well just use my Sony Handycam because then the upload will take a little bit longer because of the data. Megabyte storage. and then But I could record either using the Panasonic microphone or uh, put it uh, in the audio mixer and use uh, these Behringer microphones. And I've got a bundle of them. I've got about 11 of them, I think. I can multiplex the room, do it in, use the pan pots, do it stereo, whatever. I couldn't care less. It only picks up a certain point of the room where, you know, usually you don't usually sit or stand or whatever in. Crawl around the floor, whatever. You know. Close the door. Not that I usually do. Very short in here, and I don't hear that ping. The only thing that is going to reflect in this room is anything that's a metal bare surface. Go figure, you know. If you take carpet outside and just literally carpeted all the houses and then clap your hand again, preferably at night time, you're going to notice, like, oh, you don't hear the echo pinging back on back against you. Uh, where you've got a back wall behind you, you don't hear the ping coming back at you because you've absorbed the wall just by a simple little bit of carpet. You know, if I could, if I could grow moss all over the bloody buildings, you know, yeah, it would do the same thing. It would be rightly absor absorbed. Uh. 
Uh, you go into a corner in a room, of course it goes boomy, don't it? I've got some bass traps put up in the corners. They only handle certain frequencies. I don't really give a fuck. As long as I don't hear slap annoying goddamn echoes in the room, I don't care. Do not care. Go at the front, boom, 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 talk, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two, talk, 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 one, two, one. Sounds the bloody same almost. And, um, you know, I guess you didn't even know that you can even hear stereo with your own lips. Yeah, you just go like this. I can hear that moving from side to side, plus in head cavity. Want to talk, uh, want to keep on going down this road? <laughs> I've been there, done that. You know, there's certain parts. Here. Oh, good gosh. Oh, look at that. Oh, best spot up there. Oh, oh well, I've got plenty of keys to tiles. I'll just glue it, stick it in place. I've got a panel over there that I fit in here. But I hardly use it now because um, uh, <laughs> climates are changing, you know. They're up and down all over the bloody place. There's definitely something fucking sinister in North America. It's that fucking one million kilowatt bloody antenna uh, pumping out with that bloody Harper shit up into the atmosphere, up into the bloody ionosphere, uh, manipulating the bloody clouds to... Ooh, la, 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 sing and bloody rain when they want it the bloody rain <laughs> maybe oh oh my goodness gracious look oh my goodness oh what a catastrophe oh look there's a bit of wall there of course i can easily go go from a bare wall have a piece of piece of this because skeptical at first and most people would be they're skeptical like mm, i wonder if this works or does anything you know of course it does of course it flipping does but if you're only going to treat part of your room and leave the rest bare walls and all that for christ's sake you're going to hear slap ping echoes you go in between those between those and then clap your hand i hear it in a cinema downtown i've got a video there's some part of the cinema auditorium in one of the smaller screens where oh, i'm hearing a flipping pinging echo really sharp because of the how wide it is even though it's narrow it's only about maybe about what, probably about 20 inches maybe 25 inches wide also on the opposite side and it's pinging and that's only a few seats uh, away that's, uh, that's only like up here so to speak and then first row seats go a little bit further back and clap my hands walk around the auditorium you know i could have done that in the larger auditorium and done that if no you know just wait for everyone to leave or get there early or just wait for everyone to leave the auditorium after the movies and then just start going around clapping my hand you know the one thing they don't do in fucking cinemas today Odeon downtown they don't play any non-sync music brainwash crap with a bloody 4k projector doing this image you know that brainwash you uh, with music going bloody boring Okay, now that's a lot. I tell you, cinema is the lost art of entertainment. I've been there, done it. Thank goodness it was the 35 mil days. Digital cinema, rubbish. Because it's just like the home. No if, no but, no debate, no vote about it. It's exactly the bloody same now. Sad, really, but... <laughs> um, there's only still a few real cinemas that are around and, you know... Yeah, you want to catch aliens in 70 millimeter, Ooh, mostly in six track <laughs> format 42. Um, that would be just the same as as it would be on uh, the DVD, uh, Blu-ray, whatever it is, the uh, so-called uh, um, original theatrical version. And then you got like the the uh, the remix version, which would be the same as the AC3 Laserdisc. <laughs> Uh, I'd have to check the AC3 again to see if they're the uh, mono or um, the same. Of course, you get some mixes that are and some that aren't, you know, other films and such. But any room's going to be reflective. I don't care which, you know. Look at all these typical home cinema seats today. That's a fabric. You look at all these other home cinema seats and if I were to make certain sounds and move along, I'm going to hear reflectivity all over that seat. 
um, typically the the seat buckets or uh, the seats are always in a down position. They're hardly ever put up, but usually when they're in an up position, even THX requirements say that the uh, this part has to be absorbed. Because listen, hear yeah, that? That's not that, but. If I were to put absorbent on that, it'd make a different sound. If I go up close to it and go tsh, 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 and then put absorbent there and then tsh, 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 again, it make that doesn't reflect. It's absorbed. It's what Tom Holman discovered with the baffle wall when he put it up. What the heck's going on? What's all this, you know, craziness going on in between the screen? He's got the baffle wall up there, you know. That's part of the uh, the pattern. Part of the uh, what makes the the magic reinforces base pushes more that low end out into the. But whoa, whoa, whoa! What's going on? Oh, the sound's coming off. It's reflecting onto the the screen, bouncing back onto the barrier wall, and does doubling the sound a little bit more. And you don't want that. And it's all oh, absorb it. Ah, salted. <laughs> That's the trick, you know. And of course, you got the you got like say a typical Dolby CP two hundred, you know, in some cinemas. Yeah, how many how many home cinemas have got one of these? <laughs> Very few, I can tell you. If I listed that, it costs way more than a hundred Trinovs. Oh, price would be astronomical. Hence, not for sale after one of those for a long time. And of course, the THX sound system. This is uh, one of the uh, first um, earlier type uh, designs of uh, the 3417s. Uh, the ones, the original ones before were a DBX 900, totally different. And then this was made, so now you've got a booth monitor so you can monitor the sound on the processor that's coming from the cinema processor itself amp return and that comes from all your amplifiers and then you do all the alignment boom, 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 put the sound output test either from the front there or from the rear and then it comes up goes in goes into the computer up onto the rta oscilloscope multimeter shall i go on yes i'm talking magic and you're meowing. You're, you're taking advantage. No, I'm not feeding you again tonight, Magic. You're being fed. You and Bear are being fed. You're taking advantage. I can't believe my cats are clever and they're taking advantage, trying to think. And Bear is waiting for the biscuit feeder, the dispense, the biscuits. Looks ma Magic. You gotta get. Should I get the bear out so you can watch? Yeah, come on, bear. Come on. Alpha male. Yes, you alpha male. You're alpha male, Mr. Bear. He's alpha. Like Moonbase Alpha. This episode. Um, yeah. Yeah, how many uh, Star Wars home theaters have got a legitimate THX in the home? Hardly any. Is it a big deal? Of course it's a bloody big deal. It's a total opposite of the, the consumer version. And that's an original 84. You know, you can get these on eBay for like $500. Daylight bloody robbery, if you ask me. I was thinking of make it, getting some wood, bringing it out by a few millimetres, just a few, and then putting some, some of those LEDs behind it because they're very thin. Unlike uh, how they were years ago, because... Thin LEDs that like didn't exist then. But I could do something like that because this is this can all be illuminated. So I could have, yeah. But oh, of course, I would only turn it off when I'm not looking at it. <laughs> I'm not going to leave the light on all the time. No point. Original, uh, you know, I don't get these imitations. I made an imitation there, but that was years ago. I made that art and graphic design. Uh, I think another one it was simple. Uh, yeah.
I want to see a trick. Look at that. Isn't that cool? You get a reflectivity. <laughs> of course, the Sony SDDS. Yeah, got those cheapest fish and chips. Unlike, unlike uh, what, what there is at the moment, daylight robbery for one of these THX posters. When uh, I got the real bloody thing for bloody less than the, what the poster cost. <laughs> I got three of these. Uh, that's the first first design one. That's the first design. And uh, there's only a few of these that were in the United Kingdom. Only a few of them that I've seen personally. Um, one at the Warner West End, uh, but that was when they changed it to West uh, Warner West End Village, and they still had the, uh, the same in uh, one of their screens. Would have been five and seven, I think, or six five screen five and seven, I think. Um, <clears throat> uh, with the same amplifier, the same JBLs, and that. Of course, they kept everything because they were going to obviously put every all the equipment back in. Changed, had a few new things as such. Uh, the other cinema that used that Empire Leicester Square, uh, High Wycombe. Not that I've seen the one at High Wycombe, but it's it's absolute. Um, <laughs> oh, it's obvious because uh, the High Wycombe was th first thx cinema in the united kingdom and that was 19 i think it was 87 or 88 when it was built uh the other one uh, uh warner uci uh, uh, um yeah high wickham empire warner warner five that's five plus there might have been a few private ones uh, not even the one at Planet Hollywood because that used a totally different THX design. That was a light, uh, a ninety uh, early or early nineteen nineties uh, design because the badge design changed from that to that sort of. It was a little bit larger in the letters, but oh, been after this one. Uh, and they got all the original cards, all the original THX cards. And these cards normally would have had to have been uh, returned back to Lucasfilm because they were only leased. You can buy the THX monitor, but the cards were leased, meaning you got to send them back after. Your cinema is no longer THX, but I don't think anyone wanted to care to send them back. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a prize. It's a prize. So if I just turn them off... leave the other ones on because it's okay because they're not connected pull the card don't pull the card when when that's on with uh, the amplifiers yeah look at that this one's 96 um, I've got others that are uh, dated a little bit earlier those cards are in another uh, in another room and just slot in Get the other cards. There's the other cards. And these are dated 1984. These uh, would have been used, like say, you know, these cards would have been used in the uh, THX um, or the DBX 900, which is uh, pretty rare. So you'd have cards even probably dating back to maybe 1983, I guess. That's pretty early stuff, that. You know, I'm kind of like Indiana Jones looking for rare THX antiquities. And uh, everyone else thinks they're into TH at home THX and all that. You're not dedicated enough. If you were dedicated enough, you'd have one of those. Trouble with um, THX is most people associate it straight away with Star Wars. They associate it with George Lucas and Star Wars and think, oh, they, they got to have it. But sad thing is, most of those people have probably never been to a THX professional cinema. 
so they got no idea what they're getting themselves in for <laughs> i'll talk bass and all that you want to keep on going huh how about sense around i've experienced sense around five times <laughs> Four times with Earthquake, 70 mil, six track. Once with Battlestar Galactica, I ended up with tinnitus because of the bloody usage of the sensor round. My tinnitus is on and off on those days. It's pretty soft at the moment. In practice, but don't notice the pressure. Usually it's centered around somewhere. It could be around in the maybe peak around eight kilohertz range. So it can go from that sort of soft level and then go up. How high in measured in air with a microphone if possible? Probably maybe about maybe 45, maybe 45 plus dB. But when it's continuous and it follows you everywhere, you know, hey, I'm following you. <laughs> yeah. For some people, they don't want to know. They want a cure. That's all that they can't deal with it. And most people end up trying to commit suicide. Forty kilowatt THX home cinema. Good gosh, that's more than my bloody CB radio base station puts out. My home, my base station only puts out a max 200, 120 at most. But yeah, I think again, again a powerful, um, maybe a bigger linear amplifier, maybe half a kilowatt. That'll only give me a few dB more extra gain, maybe to. You know, but hey, if I can get over to the United States on 120, that's not too bad. On a busy day, that is, mind you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. You don't need to spend <clears throat> millions on a home cinema. A practical, real cinema wouldn't even cost that. Not even today. Well, actually, that's a that's a lie, actually, because um, they were saying that they were going to say that digital was going to make things cheap. Thirty five digital in a way. Yeah, that made things cheaper because 70 mil prints were extremely expensive, about 16,000, 16 grand compared to a 35. And you can do gosh golly and do all the printing on that. And then you end up with multi, multi, multi soundtracks on it. So you've got multi tracks, DDS, SRD, SDDS 68. <laughs> Crying out loud, you've got all that on 35 mil. Crikey. Um, but you get to like now, what it is now, all this digital 4K garbage trash. Oh my goodness gracious. 35 millimeter projectors. Oh, the first one I ever worked on that cinema, Cinema Canica, Victoria 5. Very nice projector. I, I was offered one for about £250 one time. I should have took the offer up. But that means really doing over the top in the kitchen. I'd have to have two port windows. It would be, nah, nah, ain't going to happen. Even though the lamp house would have been smaller size because I don't need a, a 1.5 kilowatt lamp xenon. I only need a s several few hundred is enough. <laughs> Um, and of course the the, the phase uh, the the, uh, the phase thing uh, would be different so it work on the conventional you know household one because normally it's uh, I think it's about four four hundred something plus volt um, yeah I could have gone that route but I know what films I know what film is you got to have it preserved in a room under t controlled temperature all year round otherwise. If it gets too much humidity or too much temperature or too cut, it can, it can, yeah, you'd end up with something useless then. Um, it's a gamble, it's just, you know, and I'd rather not. So I thought, you know, I like sound systems. I like the sound things. That's what I like. Every projectionist is different. Some like ampage, current, voltage. They're into that sort of thing. Others like collecting posters. Others just like um, other sort of memorabilia. Uh, others like um, to actually get the whole damn thing, you know, and put it in the home. Um, everyone's different in that sort of field. Others just simply 
give it up, turn their back on, and move on to other things. But you don't have to spend uh, one million dollars on a Star Wars home theater. You know, there are ways of making aesthetics and look like a. You know, there are ways around that make it very cheap. And you know, when you go around and tap on it, it's like, oh, it's made of wood. It's not metal. It looks like it because it's sprayed and makes it look like that. What do you think movie sets are done, for Christ's sake? You look at all those designs that um, uh, the set designer did for Star Wars, a different set designer for uh, um, John Barry, I think it was, a uh, set designer of the, uh, you know, other movies he's done. And, you know, all those designs. Wow. And he, he sadly passed away. Uh, and then other set designs for like I think Empire looks pretty cool with the way uh, things are shaped and designed on the Cloud City. They look really cool. And but you look at it and think, well, it's got to be made out of wood, or maybe a bit of uh, something like this. It can't be made out of you know because they're taking their budget up too high. You know things are got to be done cheap, make it look like it costs the Empire trillions of credits <laughs> I don't want to do my home like a movie theme Batman Superman Star Wars Star Trek I don't want to do it like that what what the bloody hell am I going to play Star Trek all the time even though I do but I don't do i got something in mind I need to destroy it and then I need to find someone that can to put then all the dimension now that mentions down and I will select all the materials for that for someone to fit it because I'm not really into it myself. And then just have something put in the room and have it totally different to what it is. Um, and I think realistically it would probably cost, with labour, I think realistically less than 1,000. So under 1,000. So it could be under 500. It could be under 400. It's just getting the materials and certain materials and utilizing it for a specific purpose and make it look like wow. That's a, that's all it is. What do you think? All these bloody, you know, crying out loud. If they can build the pyramids in a movie and then use a backdrop uh, map painting or digital CGI thing today, you know, even though I prefer the originals, they, they look pretty damn good even though you can tell it's synthetic, but some of the ones that, mm, oh, that's CGI. Wow. Is that CGI? Really? Bloody hell, they done it. Flipping out. That's really done good. You know, better than, you know, something that, oh, crikey, this Marvel movie garbage trash really does look CGI because seeing all what's going on there, that's, that's totally unbelievable. And you know that's all CGI because you know you can't do that in reality. <laughs> so as long as I've got no echo in this room. Oh, bit of bare wall down there. But hey, um, bit of bare wall over there. Almost like a cinema, actually. Like a UCI, actually. It was uh, more or less uh, up to about this height, I think. Uh, seated height would be about, about a bare wall. Uh, everything going upward to the ceiling would be absorbent. And then uh, the, you got the ceiling tiles, and that would have a certain absorbent property um, with it. And um, all this thing about bloody making the room black, and all this like, you know, you got the black border stuff that goes around the actual screen thing yeah, itself. Why not just use that material and just plaster the wall and ceiling? <laughs> you got to get more or less the same similar with a carpet, you know, and then bam. Oh, yeah, I see all these fancy designs with uh, all these twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Oh, I've seen all that. And I think, yeah, I could do that. I could do that. Only I would go a lot more further. I would go way, way, way further beyond all that. Uh, <laughs> I've seen what a planetarium looked like years ago. Um, that was impressive. Uh, if I were to look at it today... I'll be more fascinated with it, more more interested, because I, I like astronomy. 
I like looking at uh, once a friend showed me where Orion was with my telescope. Um, Orion, wow, wow, that was real. Like that's like high definition. I'm looking at that goes way beyond 4K Blu-ray disc and shit. You know, I can actually see the sh like a dust or a, a texture, and even though it's black and white because of the distance. And you get that flicker occasionally because that's the atmosphere doing that. You go beyond that. You don't notice that. That's why the Hubble looks so sharp because, you know, you get the flicker. You've got to have a, a, a observatories uh, very high. I think there's some maybe like Hawaii and they're pretty high altitude. And you get minimise the flicker effects as such because of the atmosphere. <sighs> anyway, I'm done rambling. All right. So I'm not, um, you know... I've got a decent home cinema, probably decent than most. I like bragging, bragging rights, you know, because who the bloody hell's got equipment like this, huh? Why do you think um, i not got a Trinoff? Because I looked at the specs, what a Trinoff can do, and it's no more different than a Denon or any other bloody rubbish, a Storm Audio, um, Anthem. They're all rubbish. They've all got the same rubbish Dolby DSU. They can't do proper 424. So, hey, useless for Laserdisc fans now playing, you know, because what's the point with the stereo fakes around, huh? That's okay, as long as you use that, PL, like a PL2X to extend on uh, stereo surrounds, how that works. That only works specifically because it had a switching circuit. So it would work on the extending by taking the phantom signal out. And, uh, you know, um, you work out how those PLs work. You know, they basically got like a PL. PL2 has only got like um, LCR output and surround. And uh, you could use it in PL2 mode. Um, you could do a few little tricks with there because sometimes there's something often hidden in the mix. There might be something there that, you know, mixers are put there, maybe thinking maybe someone will clue on to it and put a decoder in there and then you've got the sound doing something different in the room. Why always the same thing, I say? You know, I've got below surround matrix in my home. How many home cinemas have got below surround? I don't think, uh, I, I can't think of any. Not the Americans, not even Dolby Labs in London. And certainly not the Chinese. <laughs> um, how many have got, like, overheads like mine? No, I don't think anyone. But it's a simple. I've just put the idea out there for you, everyone. If you want it, put it in. It's there for free. I don't want to gain money on it. What the fuck for? I tried doing that shit years ago. Um, I should have... If the internet was a little bit more wide of base with forum sites back in the late 90s, I would have shared it on the internet on a forum site. Period. I would have shared it rather than just share it with Dolby Labs and then they take my idea. They don't give me credit for the idea. Fuck you, Dolby Labs. Uh, fuck you, Eric Christofferson. Dolby Lab, New York. Fuck you. On behalf of uh, lower class uh, people that uh, worked in as a projectionist, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, Eric Christofferson. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, that's interesting why you're using five speakers on the back wall. It's usually, I know, six. <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. Oh. Oh, very interesting. He was very interested. Yeah, thinking Skywalker Sound and that Dolby lads were coming up with the bloody idea. Oh, bullshit. They just take one of their Dolby CP 5045s off the bloody shelf, modify it. <laughs> and then, then, of course, everyone knew there was a Star Wars movie coming out. And then something else is announced. Oh, new Star Wars coming out. Oh, with new sound system format for Jar Jar Binks. He's the Phantom Menace. But hardly heard him going, whish, whish, we in the bloody backs around. Very disappointing. Um, yeah, yeah. 
the idea came to mind 1989 while I was at UCI Cinemas, looking through the projection port window, listening on the booth monitor, switching through the booth uh, cipher buttons, and like uh, listening to the Matrix because I've already heard sent me at uh, the Empire and the, the other local cinema and um, the stereo surround kind of it was it was bothering me a little bit, disorientating me sort of, and I'm thinking there's something there. It it sort of made me a little depressed. Kind of like, in a way, I suppose you think George Lucas, how he felt depressed when he heard The Empire Strikes Back at that cinema. What the fuck? This isn't what we mixed. What the bloody hell's going on there? Help me, Obi, Tom Holman. You're my only bloody, uh, you know. He had this go through white papers consulting with other people he had to go through everything microphones everything how things recorded how on set and on dubbing state oh crikey to put what is what was a mess and put it right sort it out and then everyone then want everyone else wow wow we want it and then they put it in the cinemas don't they and Tom Holman um, is uh, mentioned to me. Oh, obviously, I must be typing, talking with him. Uh, he mentioned that um, he was working his ass off like 20 hours, ridiculous, trying to get the THX up and running, you know? Because it was early days sort of thing, if you think about it. Learning and getting it up and tuning and you know, and I've been to some of those good THX sound system cinemas and they are bloody out of this world. High Wickham, awesome. Awesome. And as long as, you know, the, they meet the standards, you know, and how much bass ever, whatever you want to put into it, that's up to you, I suppose, you know. How it was at High Wickham, flipping heck. It, it would blow mine away, of course. I don't have the same size. I don't have. I don't have the same amplifiers. I've got the same cinema processor. I've got the same THX. I got. not have the same acoustics, of course. I don't have the same screen JBLs. I've got some parts of the the components that are. Um, I've just got smaller JBL cinema speakers, five of them. So. Uh, Empire Leicester Square, and all that was put in by. Bell Theatre Services. Um, I'm not sure about the Warner. Maybe they were. Maybe it was another supply cinema installer. But uh, Wickham and Empire, wow, even though Empire had a bit of an echo on it, um, it was still way better than I was listening to other movies in other cinemas that I've seen the same movie over and over. Star Treks, oh, wow, out of this world. Is that what I've been missing on the soundtrack? <laughs> I didn't even know it was there. Wow. Not only hear it, I feel it. Directional bass? Wow. Cool. And bass that just goes so damn hard, I was willing, hoping this system would just crack up at some point. It just kept going because the way it's tuned and the way the dynamics going to be playing at, um, HF horns didn't even make my ears hurt they were loud exciting but not harsh where they're just you know it's like you know and you've got unlike some you know because I've heard the the 50 say 56k kilowatt at the Empire THX certified not like the original THX 89 version JBL even though everything was JBL, it was just top end. It was just mid, mid and HF, HF horns behind the screen. And of course, you've got to then balance that level into the surround. It was just, ugh, they ruined it. Um, the, the other one, the original was way better, had more bass. Had way, 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 way more bass. So you feel all the Foley punches. All the details, even Mr. Spock in Star Trek 2, when he walks up to the door, when Captain Kirk is standing behind the transparent door, and then walks up and then bumps against it. Boom, I feel that in my chest. 
Yeah.